Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about matrix uh, determinants. Um, I did spend some time on 2x2 two two matrices and uh, let me just remind you very briefly um, if you have uh, a system of two equations with two variables and I'm talking about linear equations of course then the matrix of coefficients uh, which has two rows and two columns um, it has an expression a11 a22 minus a12 a21 as a very important uh, characteristic of the matrix now this characteristic actually is so important that whether it's equal to zero or not is sufficient to determine whether the system has a unique solution. So if this is a system of two equations, we are talking about unique solution. If, if this is a transformation of coordinates from x coordinates to y coordinates, then um, this basically is, is equivalent to whether the transformation is inversible. I mean, if you can find out x1 and x2 as a unique solution based on y1 and y2, that means we can transform it back, right? So from x to y, and then if y is given, then we can back transform it back to x. So this matrix of transformation, now it's a transformation of coordinates, is, again, uh, it's important, and this particular determinant, whether it is or it is not equal to zero, is a characteristic of both the uh, system of equations or um, matrix transformation of the coordinates. Uh, basically, I might actually say that if this determinant is not equal to zero, then the matrix is, well, good in certain way, because the unique solution of the system exists, or the transformation, linear transformation, is inversible. Uh, if the matrix uh, has the determinant equal to zero, then the system is not good. I mean, I might say it's bad. <laughs> Basically, it means that system either doesn't have a solution or there are infinite number of solutions, uh, but in any way, there is no unique solution. Let's put it this way. And the transformation, which is defined by this matrix from x coordinates to y coordinates, is not inversible. Now, what's, an inver what's not inversible? What's inversible and not inversible transformation of two coordinates? It's on the plane, basically. Well. For instance, if you want to stretch the plane, so every vector is multiplied by two, that's a, a linear transformation and it's inversible. Basically, it's like one one y y one is equal to some coefficients times x one and y two is equal to the same, for instance, uh, coefficients by x two. Um, however, if you have a projections, for instance, like y one is equal to x one and y two is equal to zero, for instance. Right? So this is not really a, a good transformation because lots of different vectors are transformed into the same one if their projection is the same. Right? So this is not a good transformation. Right? So determinant equals to zero means it's not a good transformation and it's not a good system of equations. Now, I would like to basically do exactly the same with a three-dimensional case. So I have three coordinates. My system of equations looks like this. So my matrix of transformation is uh, 3 by 3 instead of uh, 2 by 2. And the question is, does this matrix of the coefficients, a11, a12, etc., which has three rows and three columns, does it also have this particular characteristic like a determinant for a two-dimension, for a two-by-two case, um, which would be, again, a very indicative of whether this transformation of coordinates in the three-dimensional space is, is good or bad, whether it's reversible, so to speak, or whether the system of equations has a unique solution. 
So either or, we are talking about the matrix from these coefficients, A with indices, and the question is, is it good or bad, and how to determine whether it's good or bad, and is there anything like a determinant for a two-dimensional case which would help us to determine this particular um, quality of the matrix? Well, the, first of all, the answer is yes, there is such a characteristic, uh, and it's called exactly the same way, it's determinant. So the question is, what is determinant for a matrix uh, which has three rows and, uh, and, and three columns? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to solve this particular system of three equations and um, in the process of solving, I will basically will determine if I can solve it and it will produce um, uh, a unique solution, then, well, the system is good. And if there is some condition when I cannot do this, then that would be a condition which uh, I'm looking for. And that would be a formula for a determinant. What's the condition on all the coefficients? The formula, basically, which combines them together um, in an expression which either equal to zero or not equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, same as a two-way two case, I will say that the system is not good. And if it's not equal to zero, the system does have a unique solution or transformation of three-dimensional uh, space uh, is reversible. So how can I solve it? Well, first of all, let me just assume that this is a true system of um, three uh, e equations with three coordinates. Um, now, for this, I need at least one of these coefficients not to be equal to zero, because if they're all equal to zero, then it's definitely a bad system, because it has a three uh, equations with only two um, variables, and it either doesn't have any solutions or it has zero solutions, basically. Or, or it has an, uh, some, some infinite number of solutions. Or the equation, one of the equations is basically a linear combination of two other equations, which means we still have a two-dimensional uh, case. We have two variables, independent variables. So I assume that one of these for x3 is not equal to zero, and just for definitiveness, I assume that a13 not equal to zero, all right? At least one of them should be not equal to zero. Now, how can I solve it? Well, here is my plan. Uh, first, I will reduce this system of three equations to the system of two equations with two variables. I will eliminate x3. How can I do it? Well, if I will multiply the first equation by a23 and the second equation by a13 and subtract, then my x3 will cancel, right? And then I will do the same uh, with, with the first and the third one. I will multiply by a33 and then I'll multiply by a13, and again subtract, and again I will have another equation. In both cases, x3 will cancel out, and I will have two equations with two vari variables, x1 and x2. All right, so first of all, let's multiply this one by a23, and this one by a13. All right, and subtract. From the first, I will subtract the second. So what will I have? Well, I will have, on the left, I will have B1 times A23 minus B2 times A13. Well, my most important problem right now is not to make any mistakes, because there is a lot of calculations here which are, which are kind of tedious. Um, but I would like actually to mention that uh, tedious and long calculations, they also have their purpose. Um, think about Winter Olympics, for instance. Uh, you have skiers, uh, cross-country skiers, who are going for like 50 kilometers. We think it's fun. I guarantee it's not fun, but it kind of develops your stamina, right? So all these long-distance calculations develop the stamina for your brain. So brain also has a stamina. You have to really be, you know, persevering. All right, so uh, the left part I have just done. Now the right part would be, now the x1 coefficient will be a11 times a23 minus a21 times a13, right? So a11, a23 minus a21, 
a13. That would be x1. And x2 will be a12, a23, this times this, minus this times this, minus a22 times a13. That would be x2. And x3 will cancel out. Because it will be a13, a23 times a23, uh, minus a23 times a13. So, 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 so it's zero, right? Okay, fine. This is done. Now let's do another thing. We will multiply this by a13, and we will multiply this by a33. Now, the first and the third, and then we will subtract them, my x3 will again cancel out. Now, what would be on the left? On the left I will have b1, a33, minus b3, times a13, equals to a11, times a33, minus a31, a13, that would be x1, and coefficient at x2 would be a12, a33, this times this, minus this times this, minus a32, a13, x2. All right, so now I have reduced my three equations with three variables to two equations with two variables, right? So. Now, well, I can solve it, but at the same time, I can actually use the previous results. You remember we were actually um, uh, researched uh, the system of two equations with two variables, and we found that the determinant of the matrix of the coefficients is basically a decisive factor. If it's equal to zero, then we have a problem. The, the system does not have a unique solution. So. If my determinant of this system has, uh, is equal to zero, um, basically I will have some formula um, for all the coefficients of my initial matrix. Um, and uh, if it's equal to zero, that means basically that uh, my, the system does not have a unique solution, right? So I will just use this. So my determinant for this system is this times this minus this times this, right? That's the determinant the main diagonal minus alternate diagonal. Well, and again, now my most important problem is not to make mistakes because I have to make a lot of multiplication, etc. So, just bear with me. I hope I will not make a mistake, but any case. So, this times this, that would be a four different members. This times this first. So, uh, I will try to order them in a sequence of the first index. So it's A11, A23, A12, and A33. So I will use A11, A12, and then A23, and A33. That's my first member. Now, this times this would be with a minus sign, A11, then A13, a23 and A32. You see, I'm ordering these in the order of the first index, and if the first index is the same, then ordering in the second. All right. Next, I multiply this by this, and that's a minus sign. Now, first I will have 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1 and 3, 3. And finally, the fourth member is with a plus sign, because this is minus and this is minus, so it's a plus. Uh, this and this. I have two, actually, 1, 3. Then 2, 1, and 3, 2. All right. So this is this multiplied by this. Now I have to subtract this multiplied by this. So it's minus sign. 
Okay, first by first, so it's one one, one two, two three, and three three, right? One one, one two, two three, and three three. Okay, that was with a minus sign. Now this times this, it's minus, but then since I have minus in front, it would be plus. Uh, the smallest one, one two index, then one three, then two three, and three one. Now this member times this. Now this is a minus, but there is a minus in front, so it's plus. Um, one one would be the smallest index. Then one three. Then two two, and then three three. Finally, this times this, it's a plus, but there is a minus in front of it, so it would be in the game there is a double one three, and then two two, and three one. I think I did not make a mistake. I hope at least. So, what can we do about this? Well, this is an, a, a, an expression of the determinant of this particular matrix, right? So, if it's equal to zero, I'm in troubles in, in the sense that the whole system does not have a good solution, right? So, I actually can just analyze this, and, uh, but before equating it to zero, be, before actually researching this stuff, I would like to simplify it a little bit. And here's how. Well, first of all, I see that there is something which is supposed to cancel out. The first one and, and, and this one. You see? They are the same. Cancel out. Plus and minus, all right? Now, um, what's interesting is that all other members contain A13 as a factor. You see? A13, 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 and A13. Okay? So, I have... Um, basically assume that a13 is not equal to 0 because I had to assume that one of these coefficients is not equal to 0, right? So, if I am asking whether something is equal to 0 or not and I can factor out a13 which is not equal to 0 so whatever will be left after I factor it out is supposed to be either equal to 0 or not because a13 is not equal to 0 which means I can basically consider instead of this uh, particular uh, expression the one which is um, this divided factored out one a13 right so without a13 and I will also do it uh, uh, just regrouping first I will get all pluses and then I will get all, all, all minuses right so all pluses are and I will try to arrange it again in sequence this plus this plus and this plus this is the smallest A11. So I will start with A11. Now A13 would be factor out here, 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 and, and here. Alright? So I will do it without A13 now because it's not equal to 0 anyway. So A11, A22, A33. That's 1. Then I will have this one with a plus sign because it has the first one, A12, and I'm trying again to be in sequence. Oh no, there is no, there is no A13 anymore. Yes, um, A23 and A31. So this is done, this is done, and this is another with a plus A13, A21, A32. Okay. All pluses are done. Now all minuses. Minus. Uh, so this is the smallest index. So it's minus A11, A23, A32. Now this is minus A12, A21. A33, and this is minus A13, A22, A31. 
All right, so let me wipe out everything else. And basically, I do have the expression which I can consider as a very important characteristic of the matrix of the coefficients. If this expression is equal to zero, then I can say that my system does not have a solution, does not have a good solution, unique solution. All right? Now, and this is actually, by definition, the, uh, the entity which is called determinant of this matrix. So I know that if this is equal to zero, my matrix does not have my transformation is not uh, a unique transformation, my system of equations does not have a unique solution, etc. Right? So, let me just talk uh, about this particular expression. It looks a little bit, um, well, cumbersome, I don't know, uh, complicated. Uh, however, I would like actually to, to show you the geometry of this thing. That would make, uh, make it easier to understand actually how uh, it's all done. Now, let's just um, put it in perspective. This is a matrix of coefficients. The interesting, the interesting thing is, I actually do remember by heart this formula. I'll just show you how I remember it. Now, look at the three positive members. Now, this one is main diagonal, right? A1, A2, A2, and A3, A3. So, we start from the main diagonal. Now, A1, 2, which is this, A2, 3, which is this, and A3, 1 is this. This is a triangle, which has a short side parallel to the main diagonal. Now, this one, 1, 3, which is this, 2, 1, which is this, and 3, 2, which is this. This is another triangle with a short side parallel. All right? So, all positive members are the main diagonal and two triangles with the short side parallel to the main diagonal. Now, let's talk about the negative sides. Okay? We start with this now. It's A11 a23, which is this one, and um, A32, which is this one, right? Okay, the red one. So it's this triangle. 1, 2, 2, 1, and 3, 3. This is this triangle. And finally, 1, 3, 2, 2, and this is the alternate diagonal. Now, all negative members are alternate diagonal, and again, two triangles with a short side parallel to it. So, if you just draw this particular matrix as a square, basically, so two diagonals, main diagonal with the plus, alternate diagonal with the minus, and then everything which is parallel, all triangles which are, which is with the side parallel to main diag uh, diagonal, R with a positive sign, all triangles with uh, all triangles like this one, the, the red one, which are uh, which have a side parallel to this diagonal, are short ones um, with a negative sign. So that's how I remember it. Now this formula actually is the definition of the determinant for this particular matrix, and. Uh, Next lecture, I will probably spend to analyze the formula, its properties, and uh, um, how, to, how it affects the system of coordinates, transformation, and, uh, and uh, 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 equations, uh, systems of linear equations. All right, so now the same thing actually, which I was just explaining, is in notes on unizor.com, and I do recommend you to go through this again, just by yourself. Uh, it might actually contain certain more details, but basically it's exactly the same thing. Um, and uh, again, next uh, lecture will be dedicated to properties of this uh, determinant for 3x3 three three matrices and uh, some comments about it. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.